Well, hello and welcome, everybody. Hey, I've got a surprisingly tricky geometry puzzle for us here today. Let's go ahead and dive into the details so you can try it on your own, shall we? Then we'll go over it together, hang out, do a little math, have some fun. It's going to be a great time. You ready? All right, so we've got this triangle EFG, and there's a circle that's tangent to the triangle at point C and point D, as you can see on the screen right there. Now, the hypotenuse of the triangle, it lies on the diameter. So A to B is the diameter, and that is part of the hypotenuse E to G. And we have one more clue, and that is that E to A is a distance of 3, and B to G is a distance of 8. And our job is to figure out the distance of the diameter, so the distance from A to B. Now, one little clue, which you don't actually need to solve it, but it might give you some confidence when you dive into some of the algebra, which gets a little tricky, and that is that the answer is a natural number. So if you haven't tried it yet, and you'd like to try it on your own, now would be the time to pause the video because, well, I'm going to share with you my plan of attack. I'm curious if you did it the same way I did. So here we go. You ready? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I know that I've got the diameter from A to B, so the center of the circle, we're going to call it O. It's somewhere in between. And I'm going to just go ahead and draw the radius to each side, and I know those are perpendicular because the radius is perpendicular to the tangent line. And that creates, for me, this pair of triangles, which turns out to be, they turn out to be similar triangles. So I'm going to use similar triangles and the Pythagorean theorem to write a couple of equations. I'm going to solve those equations using some algebra to figure out the value of R. Then I'll just double that to find the diameter, right? Now, the algebra that's ahead, some of it does get a little bit ugly. So just be patient. Take your time. You know the answer is a an integer. It's a natural number. It's going to be easy. You ready? Well, the number's easy. <laughs> Maybe finding it isn't so much so. All right. So if you tried it already and you got stuck... Maybe this is enough information to get you over the hump, and you can finish it from here on your own. So go ahead and pause the video. If that's your situation, see if you can finish it. You ready? All right, here, I'm going to do it myself. So my first claim is that triangle ECO and DOG, they are similar. So that's this triangle up here and this triangle right over here. So if they're similar, that means all the angles are the same. So let's see if we can support that claim. So I know that uh, ECO and ODG, those are both right angles because the radius is perpendicular to the tangent line at the point of tangency, and those are those points of tangency are D and C. So those are right angles. That part's not so bad. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and extend D to O, and what I'm going to show you is that CEO is, or FEO, either way, is the same exact measurement as DOG. So these two angles right here are exactly the same. Now the reason we know that is because FE and DO are parallel to each other because they're both perpendicular to FG, right? And so if I take the rest of the diagram away and just leave us with the pertinent information, we can see that we have a pair of parallel lines and a transversal, and these two angles are corresponding, so therefore they are congruent to each other. All right, And since we have right triangles, and we know that they're both right triangles, and these angles are congruent, that means the other two angles are congruent. Therefore, all three angles, all of the corresponding angles are congruent, so the two triangles are in fact similar. Now the reason we need that is because corresponding parts of similar triangles are proportional. So E to C and O to D, those are corresponding, and C to O and D to G are corresponding. We're going to call C to E X and D to O, uh, well, that's the radius, but D to G is Y. So if we set up our ratio, we have X over R equals R over Y, and we can simplify that, multiplying both sides by X are by y and by r, and we get our first equation, xy equals r squared. That's cool. Let's tuck that away and use that for, well, here in the, in the near future, right? All right, so now let's talk about the triangle ECO, and let's use the Pythagorean theorem and see if we can come up with some other expression for x and for r. So x squared plus r squared equals the hypotenuse is 3 plus r, so 3 plus r squared. Let's go ahead and square 3 plus r, and we get 9 plus 6r plus r squared. All right, those both have an r squared. 
on each side of the equal sign, so we can go ahead and clean that up, get rid of those, and our equation for x squared is x squared is equal to 9 plus 6r. Let's do the same treatment for the other triangle, DOG. Right, so Pythagorean theorem, y squared plus r squared is equal to r plus 8 squared. So let's go ahead and square 8 plus r. I'm going to get 64 plus 16 r plus r squared. Once again, they both have an r squared on each side. Each side of the equation has an r squared, so we can get rid of those. And here are our three equations. x times y equals r squared. That's cool. And then we have x squared. We know that's 9 plus 6 r. y squared is 64 plus 8 r. Problem is, x plus y, well, this is x squared. That's y squared. So let's go ahead and square the very first equation, and we get x squared plus y squared, x squared times y squared is equal to r to the fourth. So let's go ahead and do our substitution for x squared and y squared, like you see there on the screen. And, well, we've got some big numbers, like, you know, 6 times 16 and 9 times 64, but we get 576 plus 144r plus 384r plus 96r squared equals r to the fourth. Let's go ahead and clean this up. It's a quartic. Let's get it set equal to zero, get our leading coefficient to be positive, and here's what we've got. Now, man, that's kind of ugly, right? It's quartic, so there's up to four solutions. But I know that it comes from this equation right here, so it's got to be an integer value for r. Man, we could graph it, but I think this is a good opportunity to practice some Algebra, let's use the rational root theorem and see if we can figure this out. I know that it's got to have an integer, integer solution, so let's go ahead and figure out the factors of 576 because the leading coefficient is just 1, so that's pretty easy. So here are the factors of 576. It's a whole bunch of them. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about some of these values, because some of them just don't seem to make sense in the context of this problem. I mean, all of these are potential solutions, right, for potential roots, but 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, and 8, and 9, those just seem too small. That doesn't seem to make sense with the diagram. I know it's not drawn to scale, but those just seem not plausible. Same thing with these other numbers. They're just way too big. In fact, I think you could also argue that 32 and 36 are also unreasonable answers for our diagram. Now again, the diagram, it's not drawn to scale, but I mean, it's going to be at least kind of close, right? All right, so let's go ahead and start off with, well, 12. It's the first one. So if we go ahead and set up, this is the way I've always done um, synthetic division like this with this kind of an upside down division box and I'm going to say that 12 positive 12 is going to be my potential root that I'd like to test and then of course the coefficients they all go right here you got to remember there's an r to the to the third power r cubed that has a leading coefficient of zero well the coefficient of r cubed is zero so we got to put that zero in there as a placeholder and then let's just go ahead and do the synthetic division. Drop down the 1, multiply it by 12, right? 1 times 12 is, of course, 12. And then combine 0 and 12, and that's 12 again. Now 12 times 12 one more time. That's 144, right? 144 minus 96, because this is a positive. That's a negative. That's equal to 48. All right, 48 times 12 is 576. We're going to subtract those because we have a positive and a negative. That's 48 again, which is kind of cool. Multiplying by 12 one more time, we get 576. And look at that. We have a remainder of 0, which means that 12 is a root. So that means that r to the 4th minus 96r squared minus 528r minus 576 is equal to r minus 12 times r cubed, 12r squared, 48r, and 48. So just like this. So r cubed plus 12r squared plus 48r plus 48. Now, none of that really matters except that this is the answer we were looking for, 12. So I know the radius is 12, and I'm looking for the diameter, so I just have to multiply by 2 or add it to itself. The diameter is 24. So I thought that was a pretty cool problem because, well, I mean, the rational root theorem came out of nowhere. You did not expect to do that when I first started this problem. I hope you enjoyed it. If you had a different solution, let me know. If you learned something, had a good time, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that kind of cool stuff. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.